Listen, we all get stuck on a search. Either we can't find what we need, even though we're sure something has been written, or you just feel lost, or you have a really focused topic. In any of these cases, the citation mining strategy can be your best friend. So what is this weird citation mining thing anyway? Basically, you take a citation you already have, whether it's an article title or a book, and then you see what they cited. In other words, what's in their reference list? This way is going backwards in time. Or you can see who cited your article or book. This is going forward in time. This strategy is used a lot for journal articles and somewhat for books, but you won't see a ton of this information for web sources, government reports, and less traditional scholarly sources. But it can seriously save a doomed search by opening a whole world of literature that you may have missed. Librarians and other serious researchers use this strategy all the time. So here's the evil genius of using the citation mining strategy. When you find a highly relevant article on your topic, you can take advantage of that author's hard work. Most authors have already done a good literature search and created a good references list that can be mined for additional information. Here's a visual representation of how citation mining works. Say you found a great article published in 2012. You'll want to look at the references list of this article to find other highly relevant works. Unfortunately, the stuff you'll find in there will be older than 2012, and 2012 is already pretty old for medical research. A really great way to find more relevant results is to look for articles published after 2012 that cite our article in their reference list. But unlike the citations from the past, we won't find these future citations in the PDF copy of our article that would have required the author of the 2012 paper to know what would be published in 2014, 2016, etc., and generally the authors of journal articles don't have the power to see the future. Fortunately, there is a way to see these future citations as well. Next, I'll show you how to perform citation mining in practice. To citation mine, first you start with an article or book that you already have. Usually you want to choose one that's as close to the perfect article for your topic as possible. Then you choose which direction you want to mine. To go backward, you just have to look at the references list of your article. These are all going to be sources that are older than the article you started with. If you have the book or article in front of you, that's pretty easy. Just look to the back and look at the references list. If you don't have a PDF or print copy, you can use a database called Web of Science to see a list of the cited references. To mine forward, you look to see what other sources cited the article that you started with. You can find this by using that same database, Web of Science. Or you can use Google Scholar. You're looking for something that says Times Cited or Cited By. These will be articles that were published after the original article, so they are newer. If you're starting with a pretty recent article, something published in the last year for example, this number is going to be pretty low as others haven't had a chance to cite it in their own work. In contrast to new articles, which have fewer citations, the older and more important to the field an article is, the more likely it is to have a very high number of citations. Check out this 1996 article on evidence-based medicine by Sackett. This famous article is very important to the field of evidence-based medicine, which is why it has been cited so many times. Of course, you can only go so far forward. Eventually, you are going to come to the present day, but you can go quite far into the past just depending on your topic and how far you want to go. Just watch out that you don't fall too far into the rabbit hole. Now let's see this in action. A student recently asked me for help with a search she was stuck on. She was looking for information on how screen time, mostly with newer media like iPads and smartphones, impact language development in young children. She had had no luck using library databases, so we went to Google Scholar. After struggling with a few searches, we finally found a few keywords that led us to at least one good article. By 
but the article we found was from 2007, which is really old. So let's go forward in time by seeing what other articles cited this one. Remember, that is the cited by link. Okay, so this article has 415 forward citations. That's way too many to look through. So I'm going to show you another trick to help you narrow this list down. At the top of the page, click Search Within Citing Articles. You'll notice that the search bar now contains the grayed out words Search Citing Articles. I can click here and add a few more keywords to search within these 415 results. Let's try the phrase screen time. There are a couple articles here that look promising, and we can keep going forward if we want to. So if looking at increased screen time, implications for early childhood development and behavior, maybe you want more information related to that. So you can also go to that article's cited by. Okay. And generally, you'll have a couple of good articles in these cited by lists, but sometimes the hits are quite irrelevant. That's okay, just backtrack and try something else. In fact, this article is exactly what she was looking for, and it's fairly recent, so now we can go backwards in time by looking at what they reference. So there's two ways to do that. The first way is to go ahead and pull the PDF up. Try the Find It at ISU icon. Note that if you're off campus and this link does not appear, you should try accessing Google Scholar through the ISU Library's website to ensure you're recognized as an ISU student. When viewing the copy of the PDF article, you would simply scroll to the bottom to see the references list. If you don't see the PDF, you can still see what this article cited by going to an ISU database called Web of Science we're going to click on the Web of Science link. Web of Science is a really big database that basically exists to link articles together by their citations. What we're seeing here is the forward citations of our article. That's great, but that's not actually what we're looking for. We want the backward citations, or the citations listed on my article. In order to get those, you would take the full title of the article, click the search button to go to the Web of Science search page, then paste the title into the search box and change the drop down menu to title. So, in order to find the list of references used in this article, you have to click on the article link to open up the record, and you can see up at the top it says 17 times cited. Those are the forward citations, but we want to look at the backward in time citations or the cited references on the PDF. That's 80 cited references. These are the same cited references that we would see if we looked at the PDF of the article, but the good thing about doing it in Web of Science is, first of all, it allows you to see the citations even if you don't have the full copy of the article, and secondly, the citations are hyperlinked so you can learn more about them. This is such a great strategy for expanding on a search you may be totally stuck on. So remember, citation mining is just another tool to make your search better, faster, and less frustrating.